That is why I never respond to Justin Bieber's text messages past 1130. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of Black and White Swim Talk. I'm your co-host, Justin Max. If you didn't check last episode where we talked to Andy Cottrell and Kelsey Worrell from the University of Louisville, you should totally check it out. It was super funny. Link's probably down below. But Elvis, that was five weeks ago. You know everybody thought that Swim Swam shut us down. Why'd we wait for so long? I mean, it, it works for Star Wars. <laughs> But right. Seriously, right I mean, we had the Thanksgiving break, we had nationals, we had uh, a lot of the guests we wanted to have on had exams, and then a lot of the other pro swimmers were traveling to different meets, but I mean, the number one reason really is we're just lazy. The only reason is because we're lazy, but we're back now and ready to do it better than ever. This week, Elvis and I are going to play a little game of toss-up. So what we're going to do is we each kind of concocted these little either-or situations, and we're going to throw them at the other guy, and he's got to respond, pick his choice, and then kind of like defend his rationale back to us. So uh, Elvis, you ready for number one? Let's do it. All right. Which accomplishment would you be more proud of? Winning an individual event at NCAAs, or making the Olympics, but getting disqualified for a false start in your only event and not actually getting to swim while you were there. How are you, how are you gonna do that to me, man? That's not, a, that's not even a fair question. That's the point. Uh, I'll, I'll have to go with the Olympics, go, going and getting DQ'd because it's, that's just the pinnacle of every sport, at least every Olympic sport. You know, only it only comes around every four years. NCAA's is every year. Um, you you go to the Olympics, man. You get to. That's on your resume for life. You get to literally stamp yourself. I went to the Olympics. Doesn't matter what for. I went. Yeah, I mean. That's got to be the answer, right? The Olympics has to be the answer. But even when I was like sitting down thinking of it, I was like, dude, like. That would be a scenario that would literally haunt you every day for the rest of your life. Like that, <laughs> that, would, that would be terrible. What do you got for me? Yeah. All right. I got, which is more annoying? A swim coach that bases the success of a workout solely on how many yards you pounded out that day? Or a weight room coach that only lets you do body weight exercises because... They think swimmers don't need to be strong. <sighs> wow. Um, <laughs> those are both just so, so terrible. Um, <laughs> I mean, at least, at least the strength coach, the weight coach, could fall back on the crutch of like, that's not my sport, it's not my area of expertise, I'm more comfortable with this, this, and this. The swim coach, like, that's what you do. Like, what, what do you, just read a book, like get on the internet, do some research, figure something, like that's, that's so incredibly unforgivable, like that's the answer, like there is no debate, that's the answer, the swim coach who still depends solely on yardage is more annoying, like that's, that's the answer hands down 100%. You never, you never get that one coach who comes up to you to meet like, so how many yards do you guys do? Oh. <laughs> I, I get that, coach, but it's silly, like, freaking, 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 uh, <laughs> like, oh, how many, how many yards are you doing with those guys? Like, see, we're, we're doing 12, 12 yards. That's how many yards I'm doing with them. Now, like, leave me alone so I can eat my hospitality brownie. Like, are you kidding right now? How many yards <laughs> are you doing with those? Bleep that part out. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's why we're not live. That, that is why we're not live. All right, me for you. You ready? Yeah. Which one of these athletes would you rather be? The one who is suspected of doping for your entire career, but you never actually fail a drug test? Or someone who fails a drug test early on in your career, but you serve your time, come back, move past it, and now everybody kind of agrees that you've been clean the rest of your time? 
Man, you you know I've been hard on on people accused of doping, but I I think I'm gonna have to go with testing positive early in your career and you know getting past it. Here's why. Hear me out. Hear me out. I know that's a curveball, but hear me out. People who've tested positive early in their career and moved on, you never hear about it ever again. It's like forgiven, you know, they come back as a, as a victim, they're now a hero for overcoming adversity, yada yada. You know, sometimes they may get a slap on the wrist or not punished at all. But those who are suspected of it, I mean, we're still talking about people suspected of it today from, you know, the East Germans. It's just, that lingers over your career. Lingers, forever. that's the word, lingers. Um, yeah, no, I'm on. What do you got for me? Hit me. Okay, which is more frustrating? Being Michael Andrew and having to read all the swim swam troll comments saying you're never going to last in the sport, your training is just a fad, uh, you have no aerobic base, and all that other stuff. Or to be a current member of the University of Virginia swim team slash Western Kentucky swim team and have to read the trolls commenting about the situation your school is in while they probably only have 20% of what really happened there of the information. Um, that's tricky. Um, I mean, obviously, like, the, the UVA, WKU thing is more serious. Like, that's a more serious allegation that people are throwing around trolling you with. Um, but I almost kind of feel like, I mean... The, the WKU thing, for better or for worse, that's that's past tense now. Um, and the UVA, like, maybe for, like, new, um, you know, incoming underclassmen, it's not as personal for them, if you can even say that, just because it's not as directed specifically at them. Whereas the Michael Andrew thing is obviously, like, it's at him. Like, that's who they're talking about. They're saying, you are not going to make it. But on the other hand, like, all Michael Andrew has to do is keep doing what he's been doing and keep performing at that level, and like eventually, people gotta shut up, right? Eventually, eventually, if he keeps doing what he's doing, people just gotta shut up. The the other side, the UVA yeah. thing, it doesn't matter what happens. Some people are just never going to shut up with that, and that's that's gotta be more frustrating because just knowing no matter what happens, some keyboard warrior is still gonna be out there with whatever. Take it from me, and uh, as a internet insult specialist, it's a word from the wise. Trolls will never shut up. <laughs> Hence this show, right? Trolls will never shut up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, All right. Last one. Me to you. Okay. Elvis, which is worse? The internet show that promises a new video every week but then waits over a month between episodes or the opinion-based talk show where the hosts don't do anything except for sit around and badmouth people who are way more successful than what they are. <laughs> no more toss-up for J-Max. Uh, <laughs> that's... That's fair. Nope, no more. <laughs> Let us know what you think about Toss Up. Email us. There should probably be an email link right here for you to click on. We'd like to hear what you say, or maybe send us one you want us to tackle on the show. That could be really interesting. But now I'd like to introduce our special guest for this episode. Um, I'm, I'm excited for this one. She is a 2012 and 2008 Olympian for the United States. She has 18 All-Americans. She had a silver medal in the 4IM, a bronze medal in the 200 back, and these are both in 2012. Uh, she's a 2013 NCAA champion in the 4IM. She is a 2012 NCAA champion in the 200 back. And the list just goes on and on and on. And, um, Beisel, Elizabeth Beisel, where coming. are you? I'm coming. 
There she is. Yay! <laughs> Hi, guys. But hey. by far, her biggest accomplishment to date is she has the greatest head of hair in the swimming universe. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're those welcome, everybody. Beautiful. Those beautiful golden mop strings of love just mop strings. showering down her scalp. Elvis, you are too kind. Too kind. Welcome, Basil. Thank you for having Welcome. me, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on, Elizabeth. We really uh, appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to start things off. I'm not going to call your hair moppy or whatever Elvis was trying Fair to enough. do. Thank you. Um, I know you were kind of like lurking around during our first mm -hmm. segment. Um, so what I want to do is like re-toss one back up to you because okay. you're kind of like uniquely suited to answer it. Um, from your own personal experience, like how would you compare the feeling of winning an NCAA title versus the feeling of going and swimming at the Olympics? I think honestly, for all of the little kids and including myself when I was younger, I never really thought about swimming in college. I probably didn't even know what college was. It was always about the Olympics and watching the Olympics on TV. So I think I would definitely have to say going to the Olympics and not swimming because I got to cube, but I can still say I went there and I enjoyed the process of it. And yeah, maybe I was a complete, you know, I messed up, but I could still get that Olympic ring tattoo. And that was like the biggest deal to me when I was 14, 15, when I first qualified, like when I first made the team, I called my mom and I, I wasn't excited about like, my race or anything. I was like, so I can get the tattoo now, right? <laughs> I was such a little brat. She was like, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. sure. But I got it. So. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. No, that's sweet. Elvis, you want to take it? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had a nationals in mm -hmm. Seattle a couple of weeks ago or last week. Um, and you're coming off a pretty good nationals performance. Uh, how do you feel uh, about what you did there? I feel really good. It was faster than what I went at Worlds in my two back and my four IM, and those are my two main events. So I couldn't really complain about that, and training's been going really, really well. But it was crazy how fast that meet was. I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. Um, but I think that's really good, especially for the United States. We were sort of, speaking of the internet trolls earlier, they really tore us apart this past summer at World Championships saying we weren't on our game, we're no longer the best team in the world, which folks we are and like and it's nice to see that at nationals we were really stepping up as a country and it, it was a really cool meet and, and it was a really good experience and it's good to you know be back and it's nice to see that I'm able to race everybody else and keep up with the big dogs again so yeah I was very happy Elizabeth Bidel coming out I'm just swinging saying. tonight oh I love it, uh, I love all right, it. okay uh, speaking of nationals I kind of feel like every year you read through the heat sheet and you see like more and more 15 year olds, 14, 13, 12 year olds there. And then you've got, you know, like somebody like Michael Andrew who just went and turned pro back when he was 15. Um, you're somebody who like one of the few people who could have actually done something like that. Like, do you ever think how your life would be different if you had turned pro back when you were 15 getting that first tattoo? I think it would have been way different and I am I'm very glad that I went the way that I went. Um, I really had good guidance from my club coach, um, Chuck Bachelor at Bluefish. He, you know, when I was 15, I was getting approached by people, agents, you know, companies to sponsor me. And I think for myself, I was just a kid. I didn't really know what was best for me. And, you know, for some people, it is the right decision. And, you know, Michael Phelps, hands down great like you should have gone pro and I'm glad you did um but I think for me I am no Michael Phelps I would not be making the money that he's making through swimming and winning the medals that he's winning so I think it really made sense for me to you know go to school get an education um swim collegiately and then go pro and I'm I'm very glad I did it the way that I did yeah but seeing how much money and freedom you have now it and no 5 a.m. SEC drug test. You're telling me not even a small bit of you is like, I'll trade an SEC title for just a weekend. Oh, oh, for sure. And 
And that, like, you know, it's, I, I will not, I will be the first one to say I love my life. Like, I live a very good life. Um, Speedo spoils all of us like no other, and I'm very fortunate to work with them. But, um, yeah, it, it's obviously, you know, you have NCAA swimming, and I wouldn't trade that for anything, but there are the times when I'm like, Wow, it's I can just pick up and leave whenever I want. I don't have to take an exam. I don't have to go to a dual meet. Um, but it, you know, they both have their pros and cons. But for sure, glad that I did it the way that I did. All right, all right. All right. Um, we asked this. I asked the same question to uh, Andy Cottrell and Kelsey uh -huh. Worrell last time, and they straight up shot me down and didn't answer at all. <laughs> but it's not going to stop me from asking you okay. the same one. Um, we are like seven months out from trials. Oh what what does that seven months between now and then look like for you? Like training, meets, rest, whatever. Like road map it out. What are you doing between now and Omaha to get you ready for what you need to do? I I really wish I could say what I just thought in my mind. Seven months. <laughs> 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 what? It's uh, hopefully it's not what J Max said earlier. It, maybe <laughs> <laughs> a little bit worse. But, you know, it is, it is crazy. I honestly feel like I was just in London, and that's almost four years ago. Um, wow. But the next seven months, um, definitely going to hit up some of the pro swim series. Um, maybe a couple local meets here or there, just because they're easier to go to, less travel. Um, but hopefully, I, I won't have a taper meet until trials, so... We're really just trying to get a base in, and, um, you know, I think looking off of nationals... Everybody from Florida, we have great aerobic base right now. None of us are dying in our races. We just don't have speed. So hopefully within the next seven months, we're going to incorporate a little more speed work. Um, just so I'm not out eighth place in all my races. I don't know. That would be nice. But yeah, it, it'll be, it, these seven months are going to go by really, really quick. Um, and I think it's, it, for all of us athletes, it's, finally time to sort of like amp up the gears and realize that it's the year 2016 so you need to start really really getting into gear and taking care of yourself yeah i wish i knew what an aerobic base is but <laughs> sprinters <anyway>. sprinters <laughs> is a... not sprinters just elvis yeah true yeah <laughs> elvis just likes to jump on boxes that are 40 feet high let him hate <laughs> Uh, All right, I got a question. I got a question. So, when I was we we swam at UK and you obviously swam at Florida, but we would always, you know, when we went to meets and SECs, you see Greg Troy and he's always on deck, kind of, you know, he he's got the mustache hiding if he could even smile under there, but it and he's got this reputation of being this really tough coach, this really tough guy, you know, um, gets in your face. And I've seen him make a few swimmers cry even. Tell, give me an example of, of a time he showed his softer side. Because I, I, it's got to be hiding under that hard candy shell. Yeah. There's got to be something Troy, there. especially with his girls, he has a softer side. Um, so I, one story, one story that's not swimming related, just, you know, him being like a really good person. Um, he actually fosters like a 10, 11 year old child, um, here in Gainesville. Um, he's just, I think he was in some sort of adoption home. They're not the legal guardians, um, Troy and his wife, but they bring him to school, pick him up from school, feed him. Um, if he needs a tutor, he'll do that for them. And, um, he stays there overnight sometimes, and I think I think that's just something that Troy doesn't really have to do. No one has to do that. Um, he's been doing it for this kid for like seven or eight years now, and so the kid's sort of grown wow. up with Troy and his wife, and I think, you know, like when we go over there for team dinners, um, his name's Kanaji, he'll be there, and he'll interact with us, and, and it's just super cool to see that side of Troy because... You know, a, a lot of times you do see the angry Coach Troy getting in your face sort of thing. Um, but I, deep down, he does he does have a heart, and he's a good person. And then another story was 2012 Olympic trials, and I was a nervous wreck before my 400 IM. Like, crying literal tears. I was just like, I, I just, there was something wrong with my mind. I don't know. I was like convincing myself that I couldn't do it or couldn't make the team. 
Um, and like he and Chuck sat me down and talked to me and worked me through the race. And like, I, I made the team and that night it was like, I think 10 PM. And I was still like very distraught after like what happened. I mean, I was obviously happy I made the team, but he ordered ice cream to my room and it was my favorite ice cream. <laughs> it was, um, he Aww. like got somebody to go out and it's okay. My favorite ice cream is fish food, Ben and Jerry's so delicious. And <laughs> Troy had somebody go out and buy the fish food ice cream for me. And he had like the room service people deliver it to my door. And so at like 10 p.m. I got a knock on my door and like Olympic trials is stressful. So I'm like, oh my God, who's at my door at 10 p.m.? Like, I'm not going to make the team again. Like, you're going to mess this up. And like, obviously crazy, but whatever. And so I opened the door and I had a little card from Coach Troy and it said, I, I mean, I forget what it said, but it was something along the lines of keep your head up, girl. Um, you know, you've got this, you've done all the work, um, blah, blah, blah. And it was my favorite ice cream. Who does that? I don't even I don't even think my mom knows what my favorite ice cream is. But Troy does. We know now. Yeah, we know yeah, we know. Yeah, see you guys do now. But like it, he does little things here and there that th they add up and it's not something big that you notice right away, but like thinking on it now like wow, at one point I told him what my favorite ice cream was. He remembered Knew that I was having a bad day, like girl, typical, like crying, being emotional, and he got me ice cream. Man knows how to get right? it done. Everyone knows ice cream is the ice way to go. Ice cream is the way to my heart, and almost every other girl. Now she's I'll, giving us I'll dating advice, yeah, bro. You I'll, I'll, In case I'll, you need it, I'm writing it down right now. All right. Um, so yeah, training with Troy. Um, you're still there at UF, uh, mm -hmm. University of Florida, in Gainesville. Now. After I graduated from Kentucky, I stayed for a while and trained there pro, and um, it was a little diff it was a, a bit of a transition for me, you know, I had, like you said, you had a lot of freedom now, no exams, you know, I had people texting me like, yo, let's go out tonight, or, you know, there's this party here I want you to host, or, you know, oh, let's travel this, let's go somewhere this weekend, and it was hard for me to stay focused. Um, how do you, hopefully you're a better person than I am, how do you handle the temptation of training on a college campus with all of that going on? I think it was the most difficult for me last fall because that was when it was my first fall not being on the college team. So I was given a lot more freedom and some of my best friends were still on the team. And, you know, the ones that I graduated with, they were still in town either working or doing something. And so there were a lot of temptations and sometimes I just, you know, I had to indulge and, <laughs> you know, but I feel like those are the stories we want to hear, but can't hear. Yeah. Right. Show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, in moderation, everything is fine. I, I am somebody that needs to have a life outside of swimming. So I'm constantly doing things that are keeping my mind off of the sport and, you know, just stimulating myself in other ways. But I think this fall, it was easier for me to say no. And I, I'm a people pleaser. If, if you like nudge me a little bit, I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'll go out or okay, yeah, I'll do this. Um, but because this is the Olympic year and you know, I wasn't happy at all with my results last summer and last season, it was much easier for me to sort of sit down with myself and say, okay, like this fall, I'm going to buckle down. Um, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm not going to be staying up late anymore. Um, and, and not to say that I haven't gone out or haven't had fun, you know, but it's just a sacrifice that I'm willing to make because l like you said earlier in the pre-show, the Olympics only happens every four years. And if you're not willing to do what it needs to take pretty much for that whole year leading up, you're not, you're not going to be satisfied with your results in the end. And so that's sort of what my mindset has been and what I've been telling myself for the past three months and on onward for the next seven. So All right, works for go. me. Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to try to get you out of here on this. Um, I know you know what's coming. We like to end our interviews with uh, our little spring celebrity lookalike mm -hmm. game. We planned a special Elizabeth Beisel edition where Elvis and I are both going to hit you with our best uh, Coach Troy oh lookalike. Oh, my God. And then we're going to ask you to tell us which one is 
funnier, more accurate, meaner, I can better. Do that. However you want to judge is fine, as long as you say one of us wins and one of us loses. Okay. You two aren't <laughs> competitive at all. Okay. No, no, definitely not. At all. Definitely not. But Pick <laughs> um, me. Okay, so I'm gonna hit you first. Okay. And I'm gonna say that Greg Troy looks like the before picture in a just for men mustache oh dye commercial who, <laughs> who is gonna show up in the second half of the commercial with just like a picture perfect pitch black mustache and a <laughs> J-Max style smile so big it makes you wonder if maybe they did a little bit more than just die as mustache. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, that oh was a good God. one. That was a good one. So the mustache oh, will find you. Back. You told me yours She's wasn't good. That's, yeah, you see, she, she sees what I'm getting said, at. Yeah, don't worry. <sighs> we talk about it. Oh, man. All right, Elvis. Uh, I feel bad about mine now that I heard that Foster story. No, 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 no. no. We, the show. Tell. The show the must, show go, must on. go on. All right. <clears throat> Greg Troy... Looks like the troll from every German fairy tale oh ever. Oh my god, oh my god, he that does. That refuses to let children... <laughs> that refuses to let children and Billy goats cross <laughs> Billy the bridge goes. until they pay... <laughs> until they pay him seven shekels. He's just under there like... <laughs> <laughs> Swim the four a.m. seven Steve. shekels. That's oh my god. I'm like burning up in here, guys. <laughs> oh. Oh. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Coach. Guys, I'm sorry, those coach. are yeah. We gotta start. Those are really good, J Max. You're gonna hate me. I'm sorry, but <laughs> no. It, it, it's just. <sighs> That's fair. I I think he took the, it. This the Billy time goats, too. like that, it's just an, got. It's I an could Olympic just see thing. Troy being like, "No, nope, you you can't pass. Did you pay me? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh my God. Gonna be I so totally, bad for you yes, whenever this must, comes out. Like. That is, Elvis, that was very good. But J Max, yours was good too. Props Great effort, to both of you. I'm very impressed. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right. that's all we have. Thank Elizabeth, you. thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, good luck in the next seven months. I hope nothing makes you say bad God, words. God, I'll need that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye guys. All right, bye guys. <laughs> See ya. Oh, that was too good. That's our show. Um, thanks for watching. Make sure you tune in next time for our super special 4th of July spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're going to make another one before 4th of July. Probably. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe not. <laughs>